Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's uh, even though the, we all hope that the end of pandemics is near and we're still having these online talks, but at least virtually I'm, I'm back in, in Germany today. Uh, I want to talk about a joint work with uh, Arthur Nodino and Chris Shaw. I think, I, yeah, Arthur is, is, is here. Um, and uh, I want to start by, so in the title, you can see this work, this word patchwork. And this, of course, refers, uh, well, at least when, yeah, when I use it, I, I usually refer to, uh, to virus patchworking. So I, I want to start actually by um, not recalling the exact procedure uh, of, of virus patchworking, but just showing you. Uh, uh, so I have to stop the screen sharing here, I think. Wait. How can I do that again? Uh, just uh, now I should be able to to show you quickly. Um, okay, there's too many too many windows here. And just want to show you quickly. This is actually this is a small web browser tool that also uh, that I that I uh, designed with uh, Arthur and and Bulos Elhilani, and I, I just want to use it to give you the the wake idea of of what this uh, patchworking construction is. So for for us today, the the important thing is that you start with some combinatorial data here on the, on the right and on the left, I guess. So in, in this case, it's just a, a subdivision of a, of a polygon. And then you see that the vertices are uh, bicolored. So they, they are either white or black, which corresponds to, to signs. So usually we talk of signs here. And then associated to this combinatorial data, you, you construct a so-called patchwork. So this is a kind of a piecewise linear object, which is somehow situated in this in this tilted square here which you should actually think of as as a real um, projective plane so you should kind of identify opposite boundary points so for example uh, this point over here can you you can see my mouse pointer right so this point over here is would be identified with this point over here and uh, the big theorem in this context, the big patchworking theorem, is that this topological shape that you obtain here on the on the right is actually the topological shape of an algebraic, of a real algebraic curve. So in this case, this is a this is a polygon of size six. So the, the theorem is saying that there exists a, a polynomial in two variables, a real polynomial in two variables of degree six, such that the solution, the real solution set of this polynomial looks uh, topologically like the picture I've drawn um, over here, okay? And this is this particular example is one of the kind of the famous ones. You can see over here the, uh, the, the number of uh, projective connected components of this curve. So that's what you get when you identify these, these points here with the boundary, with the opposite boundary points and kind of, uh, for example, this, this, this big, uh, line segment here is actually closed once you once you glue it with these with these two pieces here, and then you count that there is exactly eleven components, and they are arranged in a certain way. So in this case, there is one kind of big component which contains another one, and there are uh, nine other components: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine small components outside this big component. And now. Now you can play around a little bit with these uh, with these sign distributions or with the subdivision. So let's just change the signs a little bit. I hope I remember. Well, Arthur can help me. If not, I want to I want to construct another curve. I think. Yeah. So this is this is another curve which also has eleven projective components, which is actually the maximal number in this case and. Uh, but, but we see that they are slightly they are arranged slightly differently. So in this case, there's again a big oval, but now it contains actually uh, five small uh, components: one, two, three, four, and this one also is in the same big oval, five. And then there are 
five um, ovals outside. So again, I'm, I mean, most of you might, might know this very well. Those of you who don't, it's just that the main idea here is that we have a combinatorial method for constructing shapes, which are actually shapes of real algebraic curves. And then this is uh, up to up to this day, it's this, this method here is one of the, or some, yeah, pretty much the only and most important construction method for, for um, real algebraic varieties. So in particular, this curve, for example, uh, was not discovered using this method, but this curve, uh, it took uh, it took over 50 years for, for researchers to, to realize that this, this shape here exists and can actually be realized by a real algebraic curve. So it's something highly non-trivial. So um, now let me, let me go back to my slides. Uh, right, how can I here? Uh, let me share here again. Um, so what I want to take away from this is, is basically this this diagram here. Uh, for uh, this is kind of not a historical account of what viable patchworking is, but for, it's kind of adapted to what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to break this procedure up into three steps. So the first step uh, I call patchworking. So this is basically um, this purely combinatorial step. You start with some combinatorial data D, which in this case is a subdivision and design distribution. And from this, you construct some uh, polyhedral geometry. So in this case, it was this, this piecewise linear um, graph that we that we saw on the on the right okay and you can all on this level you can already ask what kind of properties does this object have so for example in this example even though we had something piecewise linear it was actually piecewise linear smooth so there was always on the right there was no kind of vertices with the three edges or there was no endpoints or something like this everything was uh, uh, yeah, kind of uh, piecewise linear smooth, okay? So that, that will be the, the first step. And then uh, this, the second step is what I call tropicalization here. So this is the following. Uh, now you start with a family of real algebraic varieties. And to such a family, you wanna associate uh, what, what I call the tropicalization of the, of the variety. And this should essentially be uh, such a combinatorial data that we used as input in the in the first step. So in this example, again, I would start with a uh, with a in this case a hypersurface. So this real algebraic variety would be given by a family of polynomials F T, and to this family of polynomials, I would associate a subdivision of the Newton polytope and a sign distribution on on the vertices of this. Newton polytope, okay? And then the theorem that you want to prove is that under suitable conditions, so uh, in, this, in this case, you want that uh, the subdivision that you obtain in this process should be unimodular. And now it's just lost my... I think I stopped sharing. What happened? Try this again. It's a bit delayed. Yeah, but we, we see it again. Okay. I will see. So in this in this case, we would have a family of polynomials. We would associate a, a subdivision and a sign distribution. And if this subdivision is unimodular, then we have the theorem that actually uh, kind of uh, a, a real generic fiber in this family of hypersurfaces is actually homeomorphic to this patchwork that we constructed in step uh, in step one in the in the patchwork construction. And then kind of the, the third uh, ingredient would be the realization part. And here we ask the question as to like, uh, okay, so which, which, which uh, tuples of, of combinatorial data can actually be realized as a, 
as a tropicalization of some family. Um, because of course, this way, using using kind of step tropicalization, this way we can uh, actually construct, or this way we can guarantee that our patchwork actually realizes the topological shape of a, of a real algebraic variety. And I'm, I'm getting kicked out here. We can still see it. Okay. Oh, not anymore. Uh, wait. I, uh, can you log in a second time? I mean, you you are you're completely out of it, uh, out of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, Just give me a sec. Otherwise, I'll. Uh, what I can do is uh, load it, load the PDF at least to the computer. And you are also back. Uh, your iPad is back at least. Okay. Ah, uh, here. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Well, let's try it one more time. Otherwise, I'll, I'll switch to the PDF on the, on the computer. So now I should be back. Uh, so in the, yeah, in the, in the case of virus patchworking, this, this realization question also has a quite simple and, and yeah, quite simple answer. So the, the answer is that any convex unimodular subdivision can be uh, actually realized as a, as a tropicalization of a, uh, of a of a family of real algebraic hypersurfaces. So that I don't know maybe so 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 this is kind of our starting point and and of course I should emphasize that all of this this, this classical method uh, uh, of uh, of Viro uh, the main point is that this is uh, is this a construction for hypersurfaces? Okay, so the whole point of uh, um, of this talk is is investigating to which extent this story can be extended to to higher co-dimension. So, uh, are there any any questions here? Okay, so basically the plan for today is that I'll I'll tell you. Um, I want to tell you how to extend the, the patchworking part and the tropicalization part uh, to higher co-dimensions. The, the realization part, as you might imagine, uh, is of course the part that we cannot hope to, to find the general answer in the, in the higher co-dimension case, since essentially this, this realization question will include the, the question, like the, the standard realization question in, in tropical geometry, whether a given polyhedral complex can be obtained as the tropicalization of a family of complex or algebraic uh, varieties. And we know that this question is, uh, is difficult, doesn't have a general answer, and we, so we shouldn't expect a general answer here. Yeah, kicking me out again. So I think I have to switch to, uh, to the, uh, To the computer, so then I'll not be able to make comments. But let's try. okay, just give me a sec. Um, and now I'm sharing here. This should be safer now. Yeah, that works. Okay. Ooh, now I'll show you all. The... <laughs> okay. So um, the first question I want to uh, answer now is uh, uh, is the following. So um, 
the first question is how to okay let's start with patchworking okay so the, the first thing we have to think about is how to generalize this this combinatorial data to uh, to higher code dimensions and uh, this is well um, so let's talk about this so this is the patchworking part and the idea here is very simple or it's not even i guess a real idea so in the uh, in the in the hypersurface case we can use this uh, sign information which essentially corresponds to the signs of the coefficients in my polynomials but that's of course something that we do not have um, uh, at our disposal in higher co-dimensions in general um, so we have to use something slightly different and here, basically, I'll, I'll show you the main idea, and this is really as simple as it can be. Uh, here, we just look at the kind of the, the amoeba or the tropicalization of a, of a real algebraic line. So the line is given by x plus y is equal to one. And well, what is the what is the logarithm map doing? Can I? Okay, let me know. Okay. So of course it just will turn this this line into kind of four uh, into three segments in um, in R two, and we can look at the kind of we can mark these segments with the quadrants that they are coming from. So for example, the blue segment here uh, is coming from the positive quadrant, so it gets the sign the sign vector plus plus. Okay, uh, the same for the other segments. And now the whole whole idea is that when you when you do tropicalization in the sense that when you now converge to the to the tropical line, you just remember um, for each edge. So for example, for this edge, we are going to remember a quadrant the quadrants that make a contribution to to this edge. Okay. So in this case, I would remember the quadrant plus plus for this edge because the blue segment has some part which converges to this edge, and I would also remember this sign vector okay and this is essentially already i mean this idea it was already i mean we this uh, this is an alternative way of, of encoding uh, signs in in real yeah in real also in, in the classical patchworking construction so this was uh, discussed or mentioned a long time and uh, well we, we basically just turned this into the following definition so um if we have a polyhedral subset in in tropical projective space, then I'm gonna say a real phase structure on this polyhedral complex X is a map uh, epsilon which associates to any facet of X a subset of set two to the n. Okay, so set two for me will always be uh, set mod modulo two set. And uh, of course, I, I think of this as as, uh, as kind of uh, parametrizing signs. So the, the zero here will correspond to the plus sign, and the one will correspond to the minus sign. Okay. And there are two conditions that have to be satisfied. So the first one is that um, the subset that I associate to the facet sigma has to be an affine space tangent to the tangent space of sigma. And note that here everything. So we're talking about spaces over over set two. So I consider this. I mean, this is a, a vector space over over the field of two elements, and I want this subset to be an affine subspace in this in this vector space, and I want it to be tangent to the tangent space of sigma over the field of two elements. So since uh, so here, of course, I should say my polyhedral sets should be a rational polyhedral set. So this will be a Kind of the tangent space is defined over over the integers and hence i can reduce it to to set two and the second condition is that for any phase uh in for any phase of code i mentioned one in my polyhedral subset i have the following kind of well a bit like balancing condition the real balancing condition so i i look at all the adjacent phases sigma sigma one up to sigma k and i want that uh if I take the symmetric difference of all these affine subspaces associated to the adjacent facets, then I get the, the empty set. So the, the, I, I say symmetric difference here. We also call this uh, double covering because, of course, 
what this what this means in, in down to earth terms is that uh, any any sine vector any possible sine vector in set two to the n is contained in an even number uh yeah sorry this this should be even covering not double covering so it's an even covering since every sine vector is contained in an even number of these uh, affine subspaces so that's the condition of a uh, uh, of a real phase structure. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions about the definition. But now I also I can't see the chat anymore. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you if there's something. There. Okay. Yep. So two quick examples. So the line that I started with, uh, as I as I said, I'll, I'll translate this into a real phase structure as follows so that the plus plus quadrant corresponds now to zero zero in the in the set two language and so to this edge here for example i'll associate the quadrant zero zero and one zero okay which is this plus plus and this minus plus and and so on for the for the other edges okay so unfortunately now i i don't think i can make it uh and and if you if you want to check here the, the balancing kind of this, this B condition at the point at this point, then what you get is well, let's see, you get for example, uh, well, let's first draw this these two quadrants here. If you if you draw it here in this picture of set two to the two, then what you're actually gonna get is I guess this this line here. Okay, so that's a that's a line over set two, and it's tangent to uh, the direction of the of the edge. And for, for this edge here, you would get uh, this line. Uh, for, the, for the downward edge, you get this line. And then for the diagonal edge, you get, uh, uh, you get the diagonal uh, line, but this is in set two. So actually the diagonal line is also tangent to the other. So this is anti-diagonal. It looks anti-diagonal, but it's actually uh, diagonal as well, right? So if you kind of if you have, if you're at this point and you add the one one vector, then you end up at, at this point. So this is a, this is an example of a of a real phase structure. And here, okay, I should say in this picture we see that this even covering uh, property is satisfied. There is one point, one sign vector which doesn't show up at all, and all the other ones show up exactly two times. Okay. And then the second example is the example of a line in three space. And I'll just try to draw the picture quickly. So I think starting, I'll, I'll start with this, this edge here. So this sine uh, vectors correspond to this edge, I think. Then I'll go to this edge. Then the downwards edge will actually look like going up here. And then the diagonal edge will here, in this case, will actually be the, the diagonal edge in this, in this cube, in this cube picture of set two to the three, okay? And so again, we see that a couple of sign vectors are not touched at all, and others are uh, covered exactly twice, and hence this is a, it satisfies this even covering property. Okay, so, um this is this is our this is actually what we propose as, as input data in general so it's going to be a polyhedral subset equipped with a with a real phase structure now um what's this patchwork construction that we can do with this uh, combinatorial data well that looks as follows so first basically only have to explain the, the ambient spaces here so i'm gonna I'm gonna map the real projective space to tropical projective space just using the usual logarithm map. So I'm kind of uh, in each coordinate, I'll take the absolute value and uh, the logarithm. Uh, now, when when you do this over the reals, then this map is actually nearly kind of a homeomorphism. It's a nearly in the sense that it's finite to one. So we're only taking absolute values. The logarithm is kind of a homeomorphism on, on positive or, yeah, on, on positive real numbers. So um, this would just map kind of uh, the, the two to the n quadrants of RPN uh, will be mapped homeomorphically to tropical projective space. And so it's kind of 
natural to reverse this construction and say, I can write a real projective space as a, as a copy of two to the n uh, tropical projective spaces, which I clue as I would clue kind of the, the quadrants of, of real projective space, okay? So in total, what I'm doing here, I, this, this is the disjoint union, or no, it's not a disjoint union, it's the, it's the union of uh, two to the n copies of tropical projective space labeled by sine vectors epsilon. And I clue them, uh, yeah, kind of in the, in the natural way in order to obtain a uh, kind of a homeomorphic copy of uh, real projective space. And the map here between the two spaces is just kind of the, the logarithm map, which takes also into account the, the, the signs of the quadrants that I'm coming from, okay? And kind of, I, I will construct my patchworks in in real projective space, but considered as as a union, as as this as this union here. Okay, uh, let me remove some of these ugly lines. So now the definition of patchwork is very simple. If I have X a polyhedral set and epsilon a real phase structure, then my patchwork in RPN will be the subset. I'll, I'll describe it as the subset such that uh, for each epsilon in the kind of in the quadrant corresponding to epsilon i want this set to be exactly the union of the cells sigma uh, which so whose whose associated affine space contains the sine vector epsilon okay so this is maybe not the most simplest description of this patchwork so i'm, I'm just saying for i for each um for each sigma, I draw a copy of this cell sigma in the copy of projective space labeled by epsilon, if and only if epsilon is contained in this space epsilon sigma, okay? So that's kind of the idea. So this space uh, epsilon sigma tells me in which of the quadrants I should draw a copy of my cell sigma. And here, uh, yeah, I, I cannot, unfortunately, I cannot show you more interesting examples. This is, this is the example of, uh, of, this, of this tropical line with this uh, real phase structure, I hope at least. And what you just get is basically, yeah, I mean, it's, it's this piecewise linear object. Uh, and so for example, here in the, in the positive quadrant, you see that we have uh, this edge and and this edge, and I check that this whether this corresponds, and this corresponds to the fact that these two edges uh, contain the, the positive quadrant in their assigned spaces. That's why we draw copies of these edges in, in the positive quadrants, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's the that's the patchwork associated to a real phase structure. And now we can start proving theorems on, on the purely combinatorial level about these objects. And uh, the first uh, theorem that we proved uh, in, in, the, in the work that we already put on, on the archive uh, is the following. So in the case, so let M be a matroid and let X be the matroid fan associated to this matroid. Then there is actually a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence between orientations of this matroid. So that means an, orientate, an oriented matroid uh, in M calligraphic, which, which kind of lifts over the, yeah, which, which gives M when you forget the, the orientation uh, and the real phase structures on the associated matroid frame. So I'm not, do not want to go into details about what an what oriented matroid exactly is. You kind of hear you have an image of a, uh, a sphere arrangement, which uh, you can also think of as a, as a real hyperplane arrangement. And the point is that uh, instead of just remembering kind of the linear dependencies of the hyperplanes, you also remember sign information. So for each hyperplane, you're going to define a positive and a negative uh, half plane, or in this case, for each uh, sphere, you're going to associate a positive and negative half of the, of the big sphere. And, uh, and this information corresponds to an, to an oriented matroid. So they, they occur in the study of real um, 
real um, hyperplane arrangement. And the, the important fact here actually is that um, that each oriented matroid can be realized by a picture like this. And when I say like this, so this is called a pseudosphere arrangement, which means that it's a picture like this, but I'm allowed to kind of wiggle these, these equators slightly. So they, they don't have to be actual equators. They only topologically have to look like equators and they have to intersect like, like equators on a, on a sphere would, okay? But this, this will be important in a second. But uh, here I just, so this theorem is actually, we, we didn't believe this for, or we, we were not convinced that this is true for quite some time. And then in the end, we figured out that it is actually true. Uh, so it gives just another kind of description of, uh, there is, as for usual matroids, there's many axiom systems for oriented matroids and kind of this, this one is, is another one if you want. And uh, well, we hope that maybe this, uh, as, as in the case of matroids, this, this might be used or could be used in the future to, to study um, oriented matroids using geometric ideas coming from tropical geometry. But today I, want, I do not want to focus on, on this. I want to actually jump to the next uh, theorem. And this is, uh, so let me introduce just quickly uh, what, what, so here I want to focus on X being a smooth polyhedral subset. And this means I, I used to kind of by now probably or the usual definition that this means that it's uh, that all local fans are degree one. And this means that all the local fans are matroid fans up to coordinate change by a, uh, by an invertible matrix over, over Z. Okay. Uh, and uh, in this case, or and we have the we have the following theorem. So the first, so let let X be a polyhedral subset, and we also assume that it's regular at infinity. If you don't know what that means, uh, well, I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> and uh, and a real an epsilon a real phase structure, and then the first statement this holds in general actually is that the, the patchwork that we construct is always a closed chain for um, homology over um, set two coefficients, okay? So this, this patchwork that we construct a priori, it's just some weird um, polyhedral space, but uh, uh, it actually turns out that it's always a closed chain. And in fact, if we go back to the definition quickly, uh, you can convince yourself that this, in some sense, these two conditions are nearly equivalent to this fact of constructing a, a closed chain. So this, this even covering property B uh, set, um, ensures that you have a closed chain kind of in the interior of projective space. And this condition A has to do with the, the chain being also closed at the, at the, sedent, at the higher sedentarity at the boundary of, of tropical projective space. But it's just as a, as a side comment. Well, but the more important, uh, so this A is basically a triviality that's not very difficult, but B is kind of a more interesting statement and it says that if X is smooth, then this patchwork is actually PL smooth again. And this is maybe not so straightforward. And uh, uh, in order to prove this, we actually use this, this theorem that I just mentioned here. We actually use that kind of locally what we see is a matroid fan with a real phase structure. And this corresponds to an oriented matroid. And uh, then we show, or then we can easily check that actually locally what we see is the pseudosphere arrangement associated to this oriented matroid. And since the pseudosphere arrangement is still something piecewise linear smooth, uh, this is basically how, how this works. So maybe I should say that this, this uh, fact that every oriented matroid can be realized by a pseudosphere arrangement is, is called the folkman lorentz representation theorem. So it's due to folkman lorentz Okay, so that's kind of the, that's the finish, that's the end of the patchwork part. So I, I explained to you, I, I gave you some combinatorial input from this, I constructed a patchwork and I showed you at least a few examples of, of properties that you can prove about these patchworks in general, even without 
looking at tropicalizations or something like this. Uh, here is an example. So this is this is a picture by Chris. Thanks to to Chris. <laughs> uh, actually, it's maybe not so. So this is an example of the Metroid over the complete graph on four vertices, and it's well known that the Metroid fan is the, of this Metroid is just a cone over the Patterson graph, which is this graph that you kind of see in the in the background. And well, uh, and here. You, you can basically choose an orientation of this uh, matroid or of this graph, and then it gives you an oriented matroid, and this is the associated real face structure. And I think the only thing that you see here is kind of an indication to the PL smoothness. So all the colors, of course, they correspond to to quadrants, uh, to yeah, to kind of quadrants in this patchworking construction to one of the sign vectors. And what you see here is that for each color, uh, there is exactly one circle showing up in the in the real face structure, and this is this is just a, this is just a reflection of the fact that this object has to be PL smooth. So, for example, there couldn't be anything with higher uh, higher valent vertices or something like this. This wouldn't, of course, be PL smooth, and there couldn't also be two circles by the by the same. Uh, by the same with the same color because then when you take the cone over this you would get something non-singular uh, like like here in this picture you would get something non-singular in the in the vertex so this is kind of just an illustration of this this fact maybe not too maybe one doesn't see too much here um ah yeah, and before i go on to the tropicalization part let me uh, mention this theorem which is essentially so this is essentially just a generalization of a result by Renaudino and Jean in a previous paper where they did the same analysis in the case of, of hypersurfaces. Uh, and they, they introduced a certain spectral sequence to prove uh, inequalities between the, the Betty numbers of the patchwork and the Hodge numbers of the associated, uh, yeah, of the, of the tropical variety in the background. And this generalizes to our situation of, of higher co-dimension and we obtain the, the following two statements. So we obtain that the Betty number, the Qth Betty number of the, of the patchwork of X and Epsilon is bounded by the sum of the Hodge numbers, uh, yeah, of these Hodge numbers, so of, of the tropical variety X. And just the important technical detail is here that we have to use uh, coefficients over over set two again, okay. And the second, the second statement is that the Euler characteristic of the patchwork is equal to uh, this alternating sum of of all the Hodge numbers. And in the alternating sum, it actually doesn't matter which coefficients you take. Here you can take a kind of integer or rational or set two coefficients if the total this total alternating sum doesn't depend on on the coefficients. Um, so, well, again, so far we're just talking about some weird um, polyhedral spaces, but uh, there are some general statements that you can prove about these polyhedral spaces. And now I want to uh, change to the tropicalization part. Um, so, for this, I'm going to start with a family of, well, first of all, it's a family of complex algebraic varieties uh, defined over the punctured disk, okay? But I want this family to be defined over a real Laurent series, I guess. So in other words, I want this to be actually a, a family of real algebraic varieties, okay? And now, uh, okay, yeah, I, I denote by xt the, the, the fiber over, over the point t in my disk. And I denote by Rx the real locus of this uh, family. So that would be x intersected with uh, Rpn times the real part of the disk, which is the interval minus one to one uh, minus the minus the origin. So it's a it's a punctured disk, let's say. Uh, 
And now, okay, on, on the first level, we can just use the, the usual um, machinery of tropicalization to associate uh, the tropical limit to, um, to this family. So one way of defining the tropical the tropicalization as a, as a set is saying, well, it's the closure of the points omega in R, uh, W in, in Rn, such that the initial ideal associated to uh, W of X or the initial variety is, is non-zero, okay? That's one of the possible definitions. Um, actually, I wanna go a little bit into more detail uh, here uh, in order to define, but we're, we're gonna need this in a second. So here's the definition again. Of course, I, I consider this initial variety as a sub-variety of the, of the torus here. And uh, kind of the, the basic theorem about tropicalization, which goes back to Speyer's thesis and uh, Speyer and Sturmfels and, 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 and others. So in this language, at, at least in this language of, of non-Archimedean uh, uh, geometry, let's say. So the basic statement here is that X is a tropical uh, variety of pure dimension D. This, the X is this set of uh, this tropicalization. And the second statement is that there exists a subdivision of X such that, which is kind of compatible with the with these initial varieties. So what this means is that for two points in the same, in the relative interior of the same cell of this subdivision, the, the initial varieties are the same. And hence we can call these initial varieties X of sigma, okay? And the second property is that these uh, initial varieties uh, X of sigma, they are actually invariant under the torus action of the subtorus. Uh, so the subtorus of C star to the N, which is essentially given by the tangent space of sigma. So I denote this by exponential of the tangent space. This is maybe not completely uh, clear, but to each, to each rational space in, in Rn, there is an associated uh, complex torus in C star to the N. And that's the that's the torus that I'm referring to here. Um, so this is all kind of classical, kind of non-real uh, tropicalization. Uh, and now, of course, I want to use this to define um, this uh, decorated real uh, tropicalization. So now I'm going to define for every facet of this subdivision, I'm going to define its affine space of sign vectors. And I'm gonna do this just in the kind of in the most, I mean, it's probably the only way you could, the, the only idea you could come up with. So for if sigma is the facet, then I'll take the initial variety associated to sigma. I take its real locus. So this, this set will be points in the real algebraic torus. And I take the sign vectors associated to such a point. So just for each coordinate, uh, I take uh, I take its sign, and that's that's the sign that I'm going to include in in my affine space. Okay, and all the signs I get this way uh, will be my real phase structure. Okay, and uh, it turns so yeah. This this is not too difficult to check that in the case. But under the assumption that X, that the tropicalization of this X calligraphic is a smooth polyhedral set, then this assignment is actually a real phase structure on my uh, uh, on my tropicalization X. Okay. So this is kind of the the tropicalization procedure. I I, I should say this. I mean, this is first of all, it's it's kind of quite straightforward, and it's not. It's not really new, so a couple, uh, of course there is a lot of you know that there's a lot of papers already on on positive uh, Crossmanians and positive Bergman fans and positive uh, etc. And uh, this is more or less the same construction just done for a single uh, for a single quadrant instead of doing it for for all of them at the same time. And and even this uh, has has appeared in in the literature uh, before, so it's not. This is kind of not new. Uh, do I have time to? So this is the example just to illustrate the definitions, since 
uh, well, it's it's a hypersurface example, so technically it's not the, the kind of thing we're interested in here. But just to quickly illustrate, so here I have a uh, yeah this family of free algebraic in this case curves in the in the plane. Um, the tropicalization in this case would look like this graph here, and if you look at this middle edge sigma, then the associated initial variety is the variety given by the polynomial x minus y. And so when we want to compute the, the affine space associated to this edge sigma, we should look at all the sign, this kind of the sign vectors that can occur for real solutions of this equation x minus y. And that's of course, well, either they are both positive or they are both negative. I mean, x and y have to be equal, so they have to same sign. So in total, we're going to get this sign distribution here. And well, I think I, yeah, just this is this is really a patch bureau patchworking here. This is a hypersurface case, just to kind of illustrate uh, the definitions quickly. So I can do this for all the edges in my tropicalization. I'm going to get a real phase structure. I have an associated patchwork. So let's quickly look at the positive quadrant here. I have these three edges, and these are exactly the three edges that have a plus plus in their um, in their affine spaces. Um, and I do this for all the four quadrants. Okay, here I actually drew a picture in in P1 times P1 since this is a bit more natural for, for this curve. And now, if you compare this to the actual um, real algebraic curves that are parametrized by this family. So here I set t equal to 1, then you see that, uh, well, uh, topologically you get the same, you get the same shape, you get the same, you get two, uh, two segments and they intersect the, the coordinate lines the way that this patchwork intersects the, the coordinate lines, okay? And uh, this, this again, this is just this is just uh, virus patchworking as we as we know it, just reformulated uh, tropically. But uh, our main theorem is is the following now. So um, we we are in this setup. We have this family um, X calligraphic. We assume that its tropicalization is smooth and regular at infinity. Okay. And furthermore, so this is kind of the the part that we're still working on, uh, furthermore, we assume the existence of a subdivision of this X whose uh, recession cones are uh, sub cones of the fan associated to PPN. So that's maybe, uh, I mean, if you're in, so this is technical, the technical part that we would like to, that we're um, working on right now, but uh, uh, yeah, so that's not, uh, yeah, and then then the statement is the following. Then for a t, uh, so then for a positive value of t and a sufficiently small value of t, the the pairs, the following topological pairs. So I look at the well, I look at the real uh, fiber at time t, sitting that this is just a real algebraic variety sitting in R p n, and I claim that this pair is homeomorphic to the picture I see using patchwork. So to the to the patchwork construction sitting in, in this kind of tropical version of, of RPN, okay? So the statement is that these two pairs are homeomorphic. And of course, as you can imagine, or as I shown in the example already, this, this story works essentially for all, well, smooth toric varieties, uh, it works the same way. I just used PN for, for illustration purposes. Um, so let's, um, that in some sense finishes the, the, this, in the beginning I had these three items and this in some sense or in our mind finishes the tropicalization part. So we actually have this kind of closed circle we have to, to a family, we associate combinatorial data and the patchwork that we get out of this uh, is homeomorphic to the, the generic, the positive fibers in this family, at least uh, under suitable smoothness 
assumptions that we also have in the, in the hypothesis case. Uh, we immediately get, so now basically all the statements that we have about these patchworks turn, well, turn into statements about uh, real algebraic varieties that appear in these, in these families, okay? So this, I had these two, uh, in these two equations and the, but in, in opposite order actually, in inverse order. So um, the, the first, this first equation that I had, or this was B in the previous slide, tells us that the Euler characteristic of the, um, of the real fiber is equal to the signature of the complex part of the, of this fiber. Okay, this is a property that was analyzed a lot in the context of real algebraic varieties and comparing them to their complexifications. And it turned out that many real algebraic varieties that we can construct uh, satisfy this property that the, that the Euler characteristic of the real part is equal to the signature of the complex part. And kind of in, in a recent paper by Prugalet, he essentially proposed an uh, explanation as to why uh, this is true for most of the varieties that we can construct. And it's basically um, basically the same idea, namely that most of the varieties that we construct, they are kind of patched together from, uh, from simpler pieces and the simpler pieces already satisfy this property. And uh, it's a property that's not, be, it's not perturbed by, by kind of doing certain cluing operations. So this is why this is true. And we, we kind of also get it here as a, as a corollary uh, of, uh, of this uh, approach. So here, I should say, we're using the paper by Edenberg, Kalamov, Mikalkin, and Sarkov, which says that the Hodge numbers in the smooth case, or so when X is smooth, the Hodge numbers of the tropical variety are equal to the Hodge numbers of the, uh, uh, of the complex variety that tropicalizes to to x okay but this this is uh, this statement is also contained in this recent paper by by Prugali. and the second statement is that the betty number the individual betty numbers uh, can be bounded by uh, by certain hodge numbers of x and here i have to be a bit more careful here i wrote the actual hodge numbers of x since these are the hodge numbers over the set two coefficients and there is still kind of this question as to whether these numbers are also equal to the to the Hodge numbers of the actual complex variety or but well, we strongly expect I think or, yeah I, I think we expect that these numbers are equal but uh, we it's not uh, it's not yet known because it's not yet known whether these tropical homology groups have have torsion in general or, or not so this uh, so far we only have kind of the inequality with respect to certain tropical uh, watch numbers. Um, and let me just finish, okay, yeah, let me just finish by saying a few words about the proof. So our, our idea to prove this theorem is using kind of reduction to semi-stable degenerations. This is not, uh, this is not new, let's say in, in tropical geometry, this already has been used by, for example, Helm Cuts uh, in the context of also by cuts uh, Stapleton in the context of um, monotremy operators, Hodge structures, um, motivic fibers. It had also been used in this paper that I just mentioned by Edenberg, Kalamov, Mikhail Kinsakov, uh, to uh, showing this equality of Hodge numbers and in the real in the real context, it has been suggested by this in this paper. Uh, by Prugalet that I just mentioned, uh, where he uh, suggests to use real semi-stable degenerations to, to study um, uh, real tropicalizations, essentially. Um, then we use a statement that I... Uh, uh, so then one basically has to uh, study these real semi-stable Degenerations. So this is something that is kind of uh, uh, independent of, of actual tropicalizations. It's just a statement about 
real semi-stable degenerations, whatever this exactly is. And I, I hope to um, kind of publish soon on the archive uh, yeah, the, the, a, sh a short paper on, on, on this separate kind of subject. And uh, here, this, the main statement is as follows. So if you have a totally real semi-stable degeneration, then uh, the, the generic real fiber, oh, that should be, that should be non-zero, of course. Uh, the generic uh, real fiber is homeomorphic to, well, something which you can concretely describe as the positive special fiber of the real oriented blow up of uh, your family X along the uh, special fiber X zero. So I'm, I'm not gonna go into, well, I, I'm not gonna say anything more about this, but uh, uh, it's just saying that kind of an analysis of real semi-stable degenerations uh, helps us to, to, to go on here. And then basically what, what remains to do is we, we have to relate um, this, this object that I get from the study of these real semi-stable degenerations to our patchwork construction via something which is like a kind of a tropical toric degeneration. And of course, in the end, we have to discuss the local case uh, but the local case we basically understand already. So the local case, remember that, uh, so based on this assumption that the tropicalization is smooth, we know that the local case, it looks like a, a real hyperplane arrangement, essentially. To a real hyperplane arrangement, we can associate an oriented matroid. To this oriented matroid, we can associate a real phase structure. And to this, we can associate a patchwork and uh, this is kind of what I already mentioned in the, in the first part that we already know that this patchwork in this case realizes the, uh, the pseudosphere arrangement given by this matroid. And this, in this case, actually, it means it realizes the hyperplane arrangement that we start with. So these, these two objects are homeomorphic and that's kind of the local case that we need to, to make this work. So I think this is all I wanted to say. So this is just a kind of summary again. So kind of patchworking uh, works to some extent and we can prove some stuff about these patchworks. Tropicalization works also to some extent under some smoothness conditions and realization a problem we didn't uh, study at all. It includes the, the tropical, the general tropical general realization problem. Uh, so this is something which has to be studied in in particular cases, and uh, and there is no general answer, probably. So yeah, let's stop here.